In the previous video I showed how failed prints can be shredded into raw material for my direct extruder with a blender. I demonstrated that particles below a certain size could no longer be broken down further by a rotating blade. Because of that industrial pellets could not be processed effectively with a blender. In order to be able to operate my direct extruder with fresh material, I constructed a low cost and quick to build device from a cheap router that can grind industrial pellets into fine plastic powder. Let's take a look at the inner components of the grinder. These are covered by a tin can that otherwise would have ended in a landfill. The stator consists of spirally arranged 6mm screws. The motor drives a milling tool with 4 blades and a diameter of 50mm, which acts as rotor. As shown in the previous video, the pellets have a too low mass to be effectively chipped down to smaller particles with a rotating blade alone. Other processes take place in the grinder. If a pellet gets between the stator and the rotating blade, the particle cannot escape and is therefore hit with full force by the blade. This scrapes or knocks off material from the pellet. In order for this to work, the corresponding particle must be clamped between the stator and the rotor. If the gap is too large, the particle flies away from the blade just like in the blender without any material being removed. On the other hand, if the gap is too small, no particle can be trapped between the rotor and the stator. This is the reason why the stator screws are arranged in a spiral. With this, gaps of different sizes are formed between the stator and rotor. Since the pellets become smaller and smaller during the grinding process, there is always a gap somewhere between which this particle can continue to be clamped and thus shredded. Grinding is a statistical process, which particle gets between the blade and the stator, when and where is determined by chance. As in the blender, heat is introduced into the material to be processed. After one minute, the inside of the tin can has warmed from the original 15 degrees Celsius to almost 27 degrees Celsius. Since PLA starts to become soft at 40 degrees Celsius, it makes sense to cool the tin can. In the simplest case, a fan blows on the can, which then only heats the interior to around 23 degrees Celsius after one minute. In addition to grinding, heat is also generated by friction between the rotor and the ground material. The dust-like particles in particular dampen the grinding process and generate high frictional heat. To remove the dust from the inside, there is a sieve on the wall. This consists of 1mm holes made with a drill. Since those dust particles are the desired end product, these are directed to a plastic bag. The whole system is dust proof, at least in principle. The proof of concept prototype seen here still has a few gaps through which dust can escape. Let's put a transparent lid on the can and take a look at the grinding process. You can see that the pellets are flying around wildly. That random movement of the pellets has a cooling effect. The plates do not always hit the same spot on the same particle, instead a new, not quite as warm particle is always ground up next. It should also be noted that the degree of filling has an impact on the degree of grinding. The can should neither be too full, nor too empty. 
especially when there's only a small amount of pellets in the can, so called dead spots can be seen, which are places where plastic particles accumulate for some time. This needs to be prevented by changing the design. The stator should be integrated into the wall of the can, which significantly reduces the diameter of the chamber. Furthermore, the cutter is currently more or less only grinding on the outer edge. Of course, appropriate gaps can also be formed between the bottom or lid of the can and the rotor, and a cutting tool with wider blades should also contribute to a higher material throughput. The stator does not have to consist of screws, replaceable blades are also possible. The chamber can be made significantly more compact. Since ground material is permanently removed via the sieve, fresh granules can also be permanently supplied in principle with a different lid construction. The grinder is suitable for continuous production of plastic dust. The failed prints pre-shredded in the blender can also be further converted directly without sieving in the grinder into new material for 3D printing. As already said in the previous video, the grinding tool is also maltreated during the grinding process. So let's take a look at a milling tool in new... ...and after the video recording. A bit of steel has indeed been removed from the cutting edge, but during the experimentation phase it is also possible that the blade scratched a stator screw. You can see that obviously pellets were also smashed behind the cutting blade, the yellow paint was scrapped off here. It has already been said that the grinding process is ruled by chance, what is going on inside the can is a bit more complex than shown here, but I will stop talking about the theory for now. Let's take a look at the machine parameters, although these should not be overestimated for the proof of concept prototype. The milling motor runs at the lowest level and consumes around 140 watts of electrical power. With this setting, the chuck rotates around 13,000 revolutions per minute when idle. The grain size of the end product is significantly smaller than the granules obtained with the blender and sieve in the previous video. Even though there are still many points that need to be optimized in order to achieve a higher material throughput, in principle the whole thing works and I can obtain raw material for my further research into the direct granules extruder project. Many thanks to everyone who has already supported my work on open source machines with a donation. You can read about how you can further motivate me with a small financial injection, for example for a can of peanuts on my website. This video was also made possible by a particularly large anonymous individual donation. A special thanks for this. As always, the build instructions for the grinder and further information can be found on my website. Have a click. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.